So you need your charged Chromebook tomorrow or some other device. If you want to bring in a laptop instead, that's a you call, not a me call. If you want to bring in an iPad, that's fine too. Just can't use your phone for this one tomorrow because it is an actual test that you're taking. And so you'll need to actually be able to see what's on your, what's on your screen. Okay? So uh, Chromebook or um, laptop or iPad would work tomorrow. Then a week from today is your test. Okay, so that will cover 6-4, which was complex numbers, and 6, excuse me, that was 6-6, six, six was complex numbers. 6-4 is polar, that's what we're in right now. Okay, we are in your note packet today. We are going to be graphing by hand, and we are also going to be graphing on the calculator. So that's why you need a calculator for doing some of these lessons. So we're going to be doing both today. Okay? Then looking farther ahead, on the 14th and 15th of May, we will be dealing with your NTC final. So you'll actually get your first NTC final review packet tomorrow. Then you'll get the second one next week, Thursday, and the third one next week, Friday. Yes, ma'am. No. Just seniors. And I believe it's the seven. No, it is the 16th. 16th. Yeah, we're not done with school. Everybody else, you got to go until after Memorial Day. Finals are the finals are the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday after Memorial Day. No. No. Next year you'll get that. You get, but you get two of them. And we split it up into two different packets. So you got to get through packet one the first day, which is twenty questions. You gotta get through packet two the second day, which is 15 questions. Other questions? All right, let's do this. So, what I would like you to do is somewhere in, you probably have a little open space somewhere on your note packet or wherever you want. I would like you to find me the third roots of negative two plus two i. And then I would also like you to find me the third power of negative 2 plus 2i. Two okay. So if we're taking the third root, then I need to convert it into trig form. So that would be two square roots of 2 cosine i sine of 135, and I would be taking that to the third root, which means that this is really the first root that I find. So then that's going to be two square roots of two to the one third power times cosine I sine of one third times 135 Oops. degrees. Two square roots of two is really the square root of eight. So that's going to be the third root of eight, right? Or no, the sixth root of eight, excuse me. So that's going to be the sixth root of eight. Times cosine I sine of 45 degrees. Then the second root is going to be the sixth root of eight. Cosine I sine of 165 degrees. And the last one is going to be the sixth root of 8 
cosine I sine of 285. If you rounded your sixth root of 8, Eight, you'd have 1.41. What's up? What do you mean? If it says exact, yes. Um, we want it to be as exact as we always can. We don't like round numbers unless we have to. But there would be the third root, which I'm sure that's bad numbers. You don't want to Six root of eight? Well, because my r value is the square root of eight. Because two squared plus two squared is eight. Square root of that is the square root of eight. So that's eight to the one half power. Two to the one third power, I multiply powers. So that gets me the one sixth power. So that's the sixth root of eight. What if you just said square root of eight is You get the sixth root of eight. No, the third root of 8 is the third root of 8. You're taking the square root of 8 to the one third power, that's the sixth root of 8. If you've got the square root of 8, that's 8 to the one half power, then that's being taken to the one third power, so that's 8 to the one sixth power. So that's the sixth root of eight. Yes. That's that's legal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ava, was that your question? Yeah. That would be wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this in trig form is still two square roots of two. Oops, I put two square roots of three. Two square roots of two cosine i sine of 135 degrees. Then we're taking that now to the third power. So that's going to be. 2 square roots of 2 to the third power times cosine i sine of 3 times 135 degrees. 8, 16 square roots of 2. 3 times 135 is 3405, so that's 45. Question. Because 3 times 135 is 405. That's outside the first lap of the unit circle, so we have to subtract off 360. 405 minus 360 is 45. Good. All right, let's graph some polars. All right. So, easy graphs, meaning graphs without a calculator. Okay. Graphs with a calculator, we'll get to in a bit here. Okay. So, Yesterday, we learned all about polars. Superman, okay? Superman leaves the Fortress of Solitude and he flies directly to where Lex Luthor is committing all of the crimes. Okay? That distance that he flew was the R value, we said. Okay? And a polar point is labeled with R, comma, something. Everybody, is that peaking interest or remind? Remembering from yesterday for people. Okay? So if I want to graph with r equals 2, so r equals 2 is my graph. Okay? What is that asking us? Or what is that telling us? 
want all of the points that are what? To, uh, but we don't call it the origin, we call it the, the pole, yep, because it's a polar graph, we call it the pole. So I want to put, I want to find all of the points that are two units away from the pole. Well, that is just all of those. Makes a circle with a radius of two. What about r equals negative 3? So everything that's at the third ring? Because it doesn't specify an angle, correct? Okay. But the negative says, in, if I were starting this one, so if you noticed, I started my last one at 0, and I went clock, or excuse me, counterclockwise all the way around. Okay. Because that would be where we would start. We would start at 0 degrees, and then we work our way up. Okay. So here now, with an r equals negative 3, I'm not going to start over on the 0 degree line. I'm actually going to start on the 180 degree line, because that's where that one starts. Because it's negative, we go opposite through the pole, and then we would come around in that direction. So that if we were tracing it by angle, we would go in that direction. But it's still a circle. Okay. Next time, what is this next one saying? Now we're saying theta equals 120 degrees. So what is that telling you? Any points at 120 degrees? Okay, so that would be that line right there, correct? Why would it have to go the other side too? Because that would be nice. So that what I drew, got drawn right there is my positive R's. But it would also include, because it doesn't restrict our R's, we would also go the other way, because that would be the negative R values. So just an R value gives you a circle. Just an angle measure gives you a line. Okay. What about theta? equals negative 120 degrees. So give me the positive angle for negative 120 degrees. 240. 240. So we'd go both directions, correct? Here is zero. Here is negative 120 degrees. Negative 90. Negative 90 gets me down to straight down. Then I got to go 30 more. Yesterday we learned that the, the these polar graphs are in 15 chunks. So that's why I went through. Gee, I, I'm, now this is going to sound snarky, but I do truly mean this. Do you need it more explained or okay? I I I, I would like because I kind of gave you like it was kind of the short and quick answer because I saw the light bulb go on in your head, but I wanted to make sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. So it's still on. Okay. All right. Next one. Oh yeah. Now let's talk. Ooh. Hmm. Two cosecant of theta. What would I like instead? One. 
I don't know, but it's not one over anything. So that's what that I don't like that part already. Two over sine of theta. Yeah, I like two over sine of theta better. You got the two. Yeah, well, I, I just forgot. Oh, you're just doing the close. I was doing the close. Okay. So you got, I figured that's what you were doing. Yeah. I didn't know we had to. I thought you just wanted to. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to do it. Okay. So my R value is 2 over cosecant. Okay. Well, let's make a let's make a T chart. Let's go R theta, because that's what we are. We're not X and Y, we're R theta. Okay. Easier to put in theta values or easier to put in R values? Theta values? Okay. What would be the first good theta value to put in? I like 45. I don't actually. <laughs> yeah. Because it's got the square root in. Oh. Oh, okay. How about zero? Oh, okay. Why 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 is zero bad? Undefined. undefined. If I put in zero here, I'm going to get out undefined. Let's try 30 degrees. Okay, 30 degrees. Okay. Well, 30 is okay. What's 30 degrees? A half. A half is sine is a half. So two divided by the sine of 30 degrees would be four. Yep, four. Okay, next one, 90. 90. It'd just be two? No, it'd just be negative two. So it'd be two well, or it'd be four again, then two. So, but that would be at what, 150? Okay, let's try those four. Well, actually, really, that's just those three. Okay, so at 30 degrees, that's here, we're out to four. One, two, three, and four. So we're there. At 90 degrees, we're out to two. Okay. At 150 degrees, that's this one, two, three, and four. We're out to there. Okay. Okay. Joey's got a good point here now. Okay, give me, give me. We'll just do one of them. Give me one of the the bottom half of the unit circle ones to do. Two hundred and ten degrees. Ten. Okay. So if I go 210 degrees, that would be what? That'd be negative 4. Everybody with me on 210 being negative 4? Because the sine at 210 is negative 1 half. 2 divided by negative 1 half is negative 4. With me? Okay. So then 210 degrees would be this one right here. But I'd have to go negative 4, which would put me right back there. It's not on the bottom. You had to be here yesterday to understand that one. Okay, because we're going negative through the pole, because it's negative 4. So we got to go backwards through the pole, not towards it. It won't be positive 4 because the sign is negative on the, in the bottom there. Depends on what your function is. You know what I mean? Exactly. Then all of them would be down there. Yeah. Yep. No. Oh no. No. This is just no. This is just my arrow of the line. Oh, I thought the dots back up here because the line then is is. Right there. Okay. 
You can have an airplane. Take it down. Is it a bowl? Oh, it's a mystery flavor? Well, I just think it would be really good. Then I want to take a chance. Are those the mysteries? Yeah, is it ever like mystery or is it usually just one of the five? No, it's usually, is it? Because I, it's a camp that I work in. It's great. Yeah. I think chair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you now try <laughs> negative three secant of theta. Negative three secant of theta. You try it. So this is going to be negative 3 over cosine of theta. Again, making my chart here now with r and theta. Here now, when I go 0 degrees, that's going to give me negative 3. When I go, my next one would be 60 degrees. That would be negative six. Can't do 90. I can do 120 degrees. And that would be positive six. Okay. So if I go zero degrees, negative three puts me at one, two, three right there. If I go 60 degrees, this is the 60 degree line right there. So I go negative six, which means I go down or backwards through the pole. Six, one, two, three, make sure I'm on the right line. One, two, three, four, five, and six right there. 120 degrees would be this line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 right there, puts me at, well, I was off a little bit, that bottom line, and have my space in okay. All right, let's go to the calculators. So, we'll verify it by the calculator, but let's just do it by hand quick here. Cosine, we're okay with cosines. So, cosine value at zero degrees, <coughs> what else we want? What are some other good ones for cosine? 60. 60. 120. 180. 240, 300, oops, I put 3, 360, 300, and 360. Okay, so what is the value of cosine at zero degrees? One, so what's my R value? Four. At 60, what's my cosine? One half, so my value of R is? <coughs> Two, because it's not, we're not dividing it, yep, yep. At 120, negative one half, so what's my R value? Negative two, 180. R value is going to be negative four, okay, because it's negative, our cosine is negative one, two forties, negative two again, 300. Two and three hundred and sixty. Four again. Okay. All right. So let's check out where we're going with this one now. Okay. So at zero degrees, we're out to four. One, two, three, and four. That puts me right there. Would we all agree with that? Okay. Well, I know what we can add in. Let's add in. Ninety's got a good one. And 270 has got a good one too. They're just zero, right? Yep, they're not undefined, they're just zeros. Okay? So 60 degrees, then we would be out two. 
1 and 2. Put me right there. 90 degrees, we'd be at 0. One hundred and twenty degrees is here. We would be at negative two, so we'd be down here. One hundred and eighty degrees, we'd be at negative four. That puts us back at that one, that very first one that we put down. Two hundred and forty degrees, we'd be at negative two. So that gets me back to that one where we started. 300 degrees would be at positive 2. That puts me at that one. 360 degrees puts me at 4. That puts me at that one. So we get those four points. Hmm. Probably should fill in something a little bit better. You know what I mean? I know you don't want to, but I think you should. Well, let's like let's do two thirty degrees. Using your calculator, what would approximately our value be? Two times two. Okay, what is it? Three point four six. So that's kind of like three point five, right? So that would be a right about in there. Yeah. I don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. You think so? You think we got enough to fill in? Yeah. Well, let's, let's get one more down here. Let's go. Let's go three thirty. What would four times the cosine of three hundred and thirty be? To be three point four six, right? What do you think? Circle. Yeah, on both sides. Well, it's like a hexagon. To stop an octagon? I kind of go right there, don't you think? Well, it looks more like oh, because you could add more values. Yeah, we could, we we didn't we skipped all the forty fives because we didn't want to have funk. We wanted good numbers. Yeah. All right. Now let's go to the calculator and let's verify this. Let's verify that we get a circle out there. So on your calculator, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to double tap on. That should take you to this one. And you want to start yourself a new document. Do not save the one that you have on there if you have one on there. Double tap it on. We're going to go to graphs then. Graphs is going to be what we want because we want to graph this in there. Okay? But we don't want a function. No, no, no. We want a polar graph, right? So we're going to have to go into menu. Then we're going to go into graph entry and edit. And we are going to choose number five. Number five is the polar graph. We're going to go to a polar graph. Notice that it changes everything that we need it to be in. Okay? It changed to an R of theta, so we're a function of theta, which is what we want. We're going from 0 to 6.28, which is good if you're in radians. If you're in degrees, then you need to go from 0 to 360. Okay? Easiest way is to just change it to radians. Our function was 4 cosine of theta. Now, we can't, we got to find theta. Theta is underneath, sure it is. Theta is in the pi key. If you click on the pi key, theta is over here, right? When we hit enter, we get a circle that looks to have a radius of 2, because it goes out 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's got a radius of 2 centered at 
two comma zero. Because cosine is a continuous function. So we just keep filling it in on the top. We already drew it. Yeah, we already drew it. Well, this, that would just, in years past, we verified it with the cosine function. We graphed the cosine yeah. function. Yeah. yeah. So instead, I just went, I went, I, I saved you from doing that. And so instead, I'm going to put in the, oops, not that one, this one. There, does that make you feel better? Yep. Okay. Graph this next one by hand and then verify it on the calculator. Please. Graph by hand, then verify on the calculator. Negative one half, so that would be five times. One eighty is negative one, so that would be four. Two forty is negative one half, so that would be five halves of one. Two seventy is zero. One. Three hundred is one half, so that's got to be negative one half. And three sixty is one half of negative two. All right, so at zero degrees, we're at negative two. So that's right there. At sixty degrees, we're at negative one half. So that's right there. At ninety degrees, we're at positive one. That's right there. At 120 degrees, we're at two and a half. One, two point five. I kind of like to kind of keep keep the the, the thing going with me as I'm going around. Because you've got to go in order. 180, we're at four. One, two, three, four. That's here. And that's one, two, three. Uh, 240. 270, we're at 1. 300, we're at negative 1 half. It is that shape. Yes? We can verify it on the calculator. One minus three. Yeah. That, the, the nice thing about these uh, about these polar graphs is they can get funky. Like on Friday, we'll get into some like leaks and rose petals and Love it. Good times.